and uh, public hearing to receive input from the community regarding redistricting, or I'm sorry, redrawing of election district boundaries. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There you go. <laughs> Sandia, city attorney. Um, yes, uh, every, uh, the city council changed to district elections uh, some uh, time ago where we've now gone through two cycles and every member of the council has been elected uh, to the council via a district uh, election, meaning that the city is divided up into different areas uh, and one elector is, is chosen to represent that area. That said, all of the council members um, through this process uh, really uh, are to serve the entire city. Um, every 10 years, um, of course, we conduct the census. Um, and this past 2020 um, was when the census was conducted. And the new law that was adopted with respect to redistricting requires us um, to relook at the population and to determine whether there is any changes that need to be made with respect to population shifts. Um, and and the lines that need to be drawn. There will be a public hearing process of essentially four to five meetings, I believe um, five in total, where um, we will have our first public hearing tonight. We have our consultant, Jeff, um, who uh, comes with us, uh, come, did um, our redistricting the last time around, and I'll have him introduce himself. And he will explain the redistricting process. Um, at the next hearing, uh, we will have uh, any discussion about communities of interest and neighborhoods that um, anybody feels that should be kept together if they're not um, kept together now. Um, and then we will draw maps. Um, and then the third hearing after the new year, we will look at those redrawn maps and have uh, two more meetings with respect to that. So that's a high level view of it. We do have a dedicated website. Um, and if the public looks at um, the staff report that was in the agenda packet, um, that dedicated web page, I should say, um, and the URL for that is listed, that is where we're going to post all our information with respect to that, as well as um, this hearing um, so that people can watch the videos and people can be involved. At some point in time, we will have a mapping tool for the public as well. Um, so it's going to be very interactive. Um, and we welcome uh, community input and comments. And so now I will turn it over to Jeff and he'll take over from here and then you'll see me in a few on uh, short-term rentals. Okay. And then we'll bring up the screen card. You're welcome. And bring up your PowerPoint. Sounds good. Good evening, uh, Mayor and members of the council. My name is Jeff Simonetti and I'm with National Demographics Corporation. We appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this evening to go through the redistricting process. And uh, sounds like you guys are grizzled veterans of the process. So um, this will this will be typical and, and similar to, to the process that, that you have done here in, in the past. Um, does this, ah, here we go, perfect. So, when we talk about the redistricting process, again, the census gets up, updated every 10 years. Um, we had the, the census update in 2020. And the process here tonight, we would like to talk about the project timelines, some key deadlines that will be coming up because there's there are some very specific timelines that we need to meet to be able to submit the finalized map to the Riverside County uh, Registrar of Voters for processing for the next election. And then we'll talk about as well some of the next steps and hearings that uh, Roxanne was alluding to. So as we know, the council members here in Indio hold four-year terms and the elections are staggered. So districts two, three, and four terms end in November of 2022 and districts one and five terms end in November of 2024. For the purposes of the redistricting process, all of these elections starting in November of 2022 will be subject to the new maps that uh, will be drawn. There are a couple of key components here of the redistricting process. So right now we are in well, the two initial hearings, which we have scheduled for tonight, as well as December 1st. These are held prior to the release of the draft maps and are specifically focused on education and to solicit input on the communities of interest in the districts. We'll talk a bit more specifically because there's there's some very specific language then that has a legal component associated to what those are. 
The U.S. Census data released its data in mid-August, and that was also delayed by COVID uh, in, a, in a typical year. So in 2010, that data would have been released back in March, but uh, because of the delays associated with, with, the, with COVID and the process of releasing that, that wasn't released until um, mid-August. You'll see here, we talk about the California data release. So there's a difference between the demographic data that the California state uses, it's called the California Statewide Database, and the US Census. The difference is that the, the census counts prisoners within the actual, the physical prisons. But for the purposes of redistricting and redistricting, the data that is used is what's called the prisoner adjusted data. And the California statewide database takes the census data, matches that with the prison data, and assigns prisoners to their last known address. So they, they take those, and that's the actual data that we use for the redistricting process. That was released in late September. So that's the reason why this, this process has been slower than in years past. Like I said, if, if this were 2010, we would have had this data in March. We'll be having two draft map hearings, which we're scheduled currently for January 19th and February 16th. And those will be to discuss and uh, revise draft maps and to discuss the election sequence. Uh, that's another thing that, that's, a, that's a component here. So you'll be at the end determining two things. First, the makeup of your districts and the actual physical boundaries, and then talking about an election sequence. So which seats will be up in 2022 and which seats will be up in 2024. That will happen during, during the draft map hearing process. The final map adoption hearing, uh, which will be uh, done via ordinance, is scheduled for March 2nd. And those final maps must be posted at least seven days prior to the ordinance adoption. And the final, final deadline that we have, that we have to work towards is April 17th of next year, so 2022. And the reason for that is that's the deadline that the Riverside County Registrar of Voters has to submit a final map to them, a final and approved map to them. So in terms of the redistricting rules and goals, there are a couple of key components here that we must follow when we're looking at the redistricting process. And we put them into what we call three, three main buckets here. The first one is on the left-hand side in the red box, the federal laws. And the federal laws specifically pertain to the Federal Voting Rights Act. There are two main key components to that. The first one is that districts have to have generally equal population. And there's been some case law that's associated with that, but the rule of thumb is that the districts cannot deviate, and that means from the smallest district to the largest district cannot deviate in population for, uh, more than 10%. And there can be no racial gerrymandering. That's specifically within, within the Federal Voting Rights Act. The second is the California criteria for cities and in that light blue box in the middle. This is something that's different since you've uh, done your last redistricting. And this was associated with California AB 849 called the Fair Maps Act, which was passed in 2019. And it creates criteria for cities that they must follow when looking at uh, redistrict the redistricting process and as well for districting if you're just going into that. Important thing to remember here that those four in the middle are rank ordered, okay? So first, first the districts have to be geographically contiguous. Then, when practicable, they have to have undivided neighborhoods and communities of interest. We'll talk more specifically about what this is in a couple of slides, but in essence, they are socioeconomic geographic areas that should be kept together. The districts have to have easily identifiable boundaries, and they also have to be compact. And when we say compact is they do not bypass one group of people to get to a more distant group of people. You may have seen some of those, those districts in, in other states that have uh, that have been uh, called gerrymandering or, or you know, have been subject of court cases where it looks like a barbell that has two districts, uh, two parts of a district that are connected with a very, very slim line. That would be an example of a, of a district that is not compact. And as a universal prohibition, districts shall not favor or discriminate against the political party. Finally, on the right-hand side, we have, on, on the dark blue box, uh, some other traditional redistricting principles. 
there are a couple of important things here. One of the things that we can look at is potential future population growth. So let's say, for example, you know there's a certain part of the city that is has a master plan community or has a large development that is known is going to happen in the next couple of years that's approved. You could potentially underfill that district so that you know that that population will, will grow into the area. One of the other things that we talk about, too, is when we say respecting voters' choices and continuity in office and minimizing the voter shift to different election years. When we talk, when we talk about that, we also talked about the sequencing. They'll, as we mentioned from the top, there are some districts that vote in 2022, and there are some districts that vote in 2024. Let's say, for example, you are currently in a district that is votes in 2022, but the line gets shifted, and now you're in a 2024 district. We try to minimize the number of people that get shifted between different election years and election cycles. One of the other things, too, and this will be part of the public mapping tool, uh, we wanted to show you what we call CVAP data. And CVAP stands for Citizen Voting Age Population. This is something that, that we get um, from the uh, U.S. Census Bureau data. And these are the 2020 maps that are associated with um, the, and, and, and it's done by census block. Um, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit hard to see on the screens here, but what if you see in the, the legend in the corner here for the, the next, the, the, this and the next maps that I'm gonna be showing you, the purple and bluish colors are lower po uh, uh, concentrations by census block and the orange and reddish colors are higher concentrations. So this one, for example, shows Latino citizen voting age population. And when we define citizen voting age population, that is anyone within the city who is, a, any citizen within the city who is over 18 years of age. Okay, that doesn't, they don't have to be registered or not, just any citizen who's over 18 years of age. So here's the Latino citizen voting age population data. Here's the Asian American citizen uh, voting age population, as well as the African American uh, CVAP data. And also, uh, as Roxanne was mentioning, we're working right now on the online mapping tool. And these data layers will be part of the online mapping tool. So say, for example, you, you want to see, see a, a particular demographic set as you're, you're drawing your lines. Uh, this can be basically a, a layer that's under while you're drawing the district, so you can see census block site by census block where, where a, a particular demographic is. So tonight, we want to introduce the concept of neighborhood and, neighborhoods and communities of interest. And at the second hearing, um, which is in December, we'll be asking and seeking for more specific feedback associated with this and also, uh, again, have a, have a vote associated with that. So the first one is defining neighborhoods. And we ask, what is your neighborhood and what are its geographic boundaries? When we talk about a neighborhood, a neighborhood is exactly like wh what you think it would be. It can have natural boundaries, so mountains, rivers, streams. It can have unnatural boundaries, highways, roads, major, major roads, canals, those types of things. Or it can be an area around a specific landmark, say a park or a school or a downtown. When we go to communities of interest, um, that takes that idea of a neighborhood and takes it one step further. And I wanted to show the specific language that's in AB 849, which is, which is in, in red in there, um, because it has a very specific definition that, that we, we have to look at. A community of interest is a population that shares comp a uh, common social or economic interests that should be included within a single district for its purposes of effective and fair representation. And again, this is something new associated with AB 849 that has passed since th the last time you did uh, your redistricting process. So what does that mean in, pra in, in, in a practical sense? A community of interest takes that idea of a neighborhood and takes it one step further. So it's a geographic area plus a shared issue or characteristic. So it could be a shared social or economic interest. It could be an area that's similarly impacted by either city or, or county policies. And what we're asking is to, for you to tell us your community story. So would this community benefit from being included within a single district for its purposes of effective and fair representation? Or would it benefit from having multiple representatives? 
That's a policy choice for the both the general public and the city council to give us feedback on as to mm -hmm. as to how you want to either define that and whether you want to keep those areas together or not. One important thing to remember is that definitions of communities of interest may not include relationships with political parties, incumbents, or political candidates. So this evening is an introduction of the, uh, the idea of neighborhoods and communities of interest. At the second hearing, which will be on December 1st, we'll be asking for feedback and then council action on areas that meet each ABA 49 definition of neighborhoods and communities of interest that should be included within a single district for purposes of its, purposes of its effective and fair representation. One final slide here. We have some of the key dates and next steps. So we have our first public hearing this evening. The second public hearing will be uh, on December 1st. We'll be making a specific discussion and be asking for feedback on the, neighbor, the definition uh, of how, what you want to identify as your neighborhoods and communities of interest. It's, we will ha be having a third hearing on January 19th, and that will be one of the draft map hearings. At some point around that time, we'll be asking for having maps due from the public because we, we'd we like to be able to obviously include those in uh, the the hearing so that we can go through those and, and get, get feedback from both the public and the council on that. There'll be a fourth hearing scheduled for February 2nd, which will be the ordinance introduction. And then we have scheduled a final hearing on March 2nd of 2022. We're giving ourselves a little bit of leeway here, um, and the reason why, like I said, is that we have a we have a hard deadline. This has to be completed by no later than April seventeenth of twenty twenty two, to be able to submit that map to the the uh, county registrar of voters for uh, submittal and submission. And again, these uh, the new map that gets gets adopted will apply to the November twenty twenty two elections and beyond. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, appreciate the the time this evening, and would be happy to answer answer any questions that you may have about the the presentation or next steps. Thank you very much. Very comprehensive. Any comments or questions at this point? This is a public hearing. Just asking for counsel, and then I'll open up the public hearing. I, I have one question. Maybe you can answer our some of our council members or the mayor. Uh, when we did this process before, is you know it says that um, our final map will be submitted April 2022, correct? Mm -hmm. So some of us are up for re-election, and it's not your issue as far as with our campaigns. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to see how did that how did that process play out. Um, as far as campaign wise, when we don't know what our district is going to be until those maps are submitted until April. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know what the, what the campaign process would be, but uh, I mean, I, that, that gives us only a couple of months to, and, and so before though, we had more than a couple of months. I think things happened late and much the, the whole process got started late and took longer than it was supposed to and continues along that path. So the last time, which was the very first time we went through the process, we had a lot more time. My gosh, we had, we probably had a year at least. Um, at least for us where where our district was identified. Um, now it's 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 just going to be different, and we're just going to have to be flexible and 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 we're going to have to do a lot of talking, a lot of walking, and a lot of videotaping. I mean, what can I? That's that's kind of it's just going to be very compressed. Well, um, thank for you. All of us. Yeah. Thank you for your work and your presentation. Looking forward to it. And I'm going to campaign the whole city anyways. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jeff, yes. and I think um, maybe, Jeff, um, I mean, when you start off the, the map drawing process, I mean, you're looking, you start off with the current map as the baseline, and then you do the shifts based on if there was population changes. Maybe you can just kind of touch on, on how that works just a little bit. Sure. It's I not know. as if we're creating all new district lines. <laughs> Yes, I mean, you know, one one of the things that 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 we look at too, you know, like we mentioned, as 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 part of this, is pre preserving the 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 core of existing districts. You know, I mean, that's that's something that that you know the the city had direction on it at the beginning when you did the districting process of this is what your districts want to look like. Um, with with that being said, I think the important thing to remember in this process is. Our goal here is to make sure that you are adhering to the applicable federal and state laws. 
once you get that to, to that point, there's a lot of different ways that that you can draw maps that that are that adhere to those laws. So at, at some point, it's a little bit more art than science. As long as you're adhering to those laws, there's like I said, there's there's multiple ways that we can we can we can get to maps that that would would do that. All right, I'm going to take this opportunity now. This is a public hearing. I'm going to open the public hearing and uh, see if anyone wishes to speak. Um, City Clerk, do we have someone that wishes to speak? Yes, Mayor, we have three members of the public on Zoom. Terrific. We can start with um, Michael M. Michael, you have three minutes. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I was raising my hand for the, um, the short-term rental comment section. No problem. Uh, we will continue with Suzanne. Nope. Let's see. No, nope. they've lowered their hands. Well, let's Anna? go with Annalisa Vargas. She is for this item. Le Annalisa, you have three minutes. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, good evening, council members and those present. And my name is Annalisa Vargas, and I'm the lead community organizer with Communities for New California, also known as CNC. I'm also a resident of the city of Indio. Well, Show up on this thing. We know the importance of the redistricting process in shaping the next 10 years and ensuring equal representation in government. Um, I just want to start off by saying that it was a bit difficult to locate the information regarding the dis redistricting process on the city's webpage. Um, there's no instructions or steps to get there from the landing page. I did see like a redistricting public hearing announcement in the tweet section. Um, but I respectfully re request that the city publicize the redistricting process on the landing page in both English and Spanish and include a hyperlink to the redistrict, in redistrict information to make it more accessible. Uh, we also know that not everyone has access to the internet nor uses it as its primary way to obtain local news. Um, according to the Fair Maps Act of 2019, the council shall take steps to encourage residents, including those in underrepresented communities and non-English speaking communities to participate in the redistricting public review process. Things like reaching out to the media, um, putting it in um, as part of the news coverage and or media organizations that serve language minority communities um, and working with good government, civil rights, civic engagement, and other community groups like CNC that are already active in the city is also a good way to ensure that we're reaching the largest amount of people possible. Um, this is a once in a decade opportunity, so we wanna make sure that as many folks are engaged. Um, I also wanna mention that the redistricting public hearings are taking place during regularly scheduled city council meetings. So it limits the ability of many community residents from participating. Our Indio families are most available on weekends and the evenings, and we strongly recommend that holding prioritizing meetings during the, these timeframes and locations that are easily accessible to the public, like schools and community centers. Um, that's also part of the um, criteria in terms of reaching the most individuals. Um, and we also know that the new map should not resemble the maps from 2011, and that's because of, we're now guided by the Fair Maps Act. So this is the first time implementing a specific criteria which guides the redrawing of our maps. So we wanna just make sure that the city is adhering to that. And um, unlike this cycle, right, um, in 2011, you were not explicitly required to keep communities of interest together or to engage in a robust outreach and education campaign to solicit public testimony. And so I just wanna make that, you know, as part of, you know, we're here to support and help in any way possible to get as many folks involved. And I thank you so much for letting me speak today. Excuse me, thank you very much for your comments. Very, very valid. And I think our city attorney is going to address some of them. Uh, yes, thank you so much. We appreciate your uh, comments. And um, we will make sure that uh, the landing page and the website and the web page is much uh, more prevalent uh, on the front page. And so we will take care of that. Um, and um, the URL was listed in the staff report. 
And we did provide and, and published a notice in the newspaper, both in Spanish and English. And um, we're using our social media as well to get the word out uh, in addition. So um, certainly we are glad to provide more robust opportunities um, for the public and encourage the public to participate. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, absolutely. I have a request to speak. Uh, Jonathan Becerra. Uh, good evening, members of the council, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm here just as an advocate for our local LGBTQ population. I know this new census, we have two new questions specifically addressing same-sex unmarried and married partners. I'm just very curious and an open question to the council, how we plan to integrate that data, that new data into our process here. How are we gonna address those? How are we directing our demographer to kind of assess that population? Um, I don't have to go through statistics, but we are a population that is significantly underappreciated in terms of the Eastern Coachella Valley. I myself am the first openly queer elected, but I'm not the only queer person in the city of India. So I think there is an incumbent upon us to try to kind of stress how we are, in, how we exist here and how we can be better represented in our leadership and in terms of how we're assessed in our district. So I would strongly encourage um, that you direct your demographers and your um, consultants to really, really dig into how we can integrate the LGBTQ population, even if it's assessing these same sex partners as whole queer households, because they all have to deal with the same interpersonal, intercommunicational challenges that comes with being part of the LGBTQ population. So I really appreciate this process and thank you to the City Council for taking the time to take public comments. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And absolutely, we'll um, dig into that. Jonathan. Okay. Do we have any other requests to speak? No other comments on Zoom, Mayor. Okay. Um, with that, I will close the public hearing and uh, see if Council has any more comments or questions. Nothing at this time. This does not require, it looks like, any action. There's no approval required. So it's really a public hearing with providing information, correct? Um, which is the first phase of, phase of what we're doing. We thank the public comments very much for your input. It will be um, taken into consideration very seriously. Thank you, Council. And with that, um, I'm going to move back into.